Hello, my name is Guy and welcome to this fifth in a series of six vlogs where I'm reflecting on what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus. So, as always, whether you identify with words like that, to be a follower of Jesus, or whether you're uh, just inquiring and exploring matters of faith, or if you come from a completely different perspective, point of view or tradition, that's fine. It's great to have you along. And my hope, as always, is that you find something in what follows in the next seven or eight, nine minutes that is helpful to you. So here's the thing. It is self-evident that when Jesus lived and worked and went about his life, uh, he did not have to grapple with a whole range of 21st century issues that we have to in our context, in our era, if you like. Uh, Jesus was not uh, grappling with uh, Wi-Fi connection issues. He wasn't dealing with the massive information that's available to us all on different uh, digital platforms, the pressures of social media, of managing expectations and perceptions. And as he travelled around his neighbourhood and region, he clearly wasn't jumping in and out of cars or considering taking a flight. However, when we observe the way Jesus lived his life. When we look at uh, what was recorded about the way he lived, for example, by the four gospel writers, the, the first four books of the New Testament written by Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. When we observe the way Jesus lived, there are some really important principles that we can take from how Jesus went about his life. Because here was a man who lived under enormous pressure he had multiple people groups uh, with very different views on the world and how people should live their lives, all uh, wanting to challenge him and uh, compete for his time and energy. Uh, he, ha he lived, Jesus, in a militarily occupied territory with very real threats to his life and security and those of his, of his community and his friendship groups. Um, the pace of Jesus' life at times was really, really stretching. Um, to be in different places, talking to different groups, uh, as I've already mentioned, under physical threat at times. And yet here was a man who very deliberately stayed in touch with his father so that he would ev only ever say and do what his father wanted. A man who built in time for rest, yes, and work and celebration and worship. Uh, somebody who took time out and invested really significantly in strategically important relationships. And through it all, therefore, he managed to operate at peace with himself and at peace with the world which he found. Not the world he would want it to have been, but the world that he found with people as he found them. So we can learn much from this. And I think an important point for us all to reflect on is when we ask ourselves the question, you know, who is mainly, who is primarily responsible uh, for the pace at which you live and I live and for the decisions that are made, we make about our lives and how to live healthily, mentally and well as physically and spiritually? Well, I am primarily responsible for deciding at what pace I'm going to live and you are primarily responsible for making the right decisions about your life and the pace at which you live. So as we think about that responsibility which is ours to take and ours to live out, I'm drawn to a conversation I remember being relayed, retold, uh, about a young man who was having a, having a coffee in a coffee shop with an older man who was a mentor-like figure. And the younger man asked a simple question. He asked, how are you? What are you living with? And the older man said this. He said, I am trying not to miss the good in each day and bring my best to it. I am trying not to miss the good in each day and bring my best to it. That is a sentence that in its simplicity gets at some profound truths and I invite you to think about it and unpack it and think what it means for you. And here are three points that I reflect on that you may also find helpful when thinking about that. The first is this, slow down. 
It is really hard to find, to see and enjoy the goodness in each day if you're operating continually at a full-on high-octane high pace. We have to take responsibility for the pace at which we will live our lives, just as Jesus did. Secondly, simplify. Simplify your life around the practices of Jesus. Now, I've mentioned in previous vlogs certain of the practices that Jesus put into his life to ensure that he could restore himself, get rest, um, be able to be at his best every day, whatever the pressures, whether it's taking a day out one day every week to rest and to celebrate the Sabbath, as he calls it, whether it's silence and solitude to connect with the Father, whether it's time around the meal table um, with friendship and laughter and fun, etc., etc. But simplify your life around the practices of Jesus. And thirdly, live your life from a centre, from a heart of gratitude and love. And this third point, this is a decision. This is a decision that you and I have to make every day and possibly multiple times a day. Because each one of us, many times a day, will be faced with opportunities where we can take offence when we can be anxious and concerned and worried about facts that we hear about our neighbourhoods and our communities and the world we live in. Um, or uh, we'll face pressures um, or sort of not great behaviours from others that could cause us to react. But it's a decision daily to live with a heart, a centre of gratitude and with love. And a couple of things to finish with. I, just, I don't want to underestimate or romanticise times of pain and times of suffering because you may be listening to this saying it's hard to see any good in any day because you have just received news of a diagnosis or you're grieving um, or you've lost a job or you have just unresolved issues that seem just impossible to grapple with. Whatever your context, I think we all know though that even in our times of pain, and pain is what it is, it is simply hard. It is simply hard. But we can also find, as Jesus demonstrated from his life, that when we're at times of pressure and stress and suffering, it can also be moments when we build our character, when we find out things about ourselves. With the prayerful support of others and friendship groups and family, we can draw on parts of our character we probably didn't even know are there. And actually, that character building can serve us well for the future. Because another thing it takes us to is, I think most of us know that happiness is not born of circumstance. No, happiness and joy comes from character and communion. Connection with Jesus, connection with our Father God, connection with others, significant other people in our lives, just as Jesus invested in those significant strategic relationships. But Happiness comes from character and communion. And I finished back where I started when I spoke about that each one of us has to take responsibility for the pace at which we live. And if I think about that responsibility, I just reflect on one thing that I continue to grapple with, but it's just intensely practical. And each of us will face multiple things of this type that in order to live with a heart of gratitude and of love, I have to watch very carefully what I feed myself on. And I was really struck once when I heard the words of Reed Hastings, the CEO of Netflix. And when he was asked, are you concerned about the new competition arriving from Amazon Prime, from the Disney Channel? And what's your response going to be? And he simply shrugged, did Reed Hastings, and he said, our competition is sleep. Our competition is sleep. I am really mindful. If I feed myself either just with too much volume or with content that constantly portrays cynicism and deceit, that has incredibly artificial or contrived portrayals of love and sexual intimacy or anger and violence, if I constantly feed myself on an unhealthy diet of that type of material, 
I will do damage to my soul. The way I think, the way I feel, the way I go about making decisions, it will impact my soul in a negative way. And I need to guard against that to ensure that I have reserves of love and of gratitude on a daily basis. So as you grapple with your challenges, I wish you well and I hope you found some of this helpful. Bye for now.